everyone, Misco Electric here. Happy Mother's Day. Today is Sunday, May 12th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news. Our goal is to provide the most helpful 10 minutes of EV and electrification stories available anywhere, even here in the woods. You may have noticed we have a change of scenery today. I'm down in Tennessee producing some work with the Tesla Cybertruck's Base Camp Tent and a couple of reviews with new e-bikes from Velatric. I hope you'll subscribe here and at the Misco Electric Ride Reviews channel to check them out when we publish. All right, on to the news. DC fast charging network operator and hardware manufacturer FreeWire Technologies has let go 113 employees at their headquarters in Newark, California, which constitutes nearly their entire workforce. During their first 10 years in business, they deployed nearly 400 DC fast charging stations across the globe, but they plan to shut down the company's headquarters by June 24th. The company stated, additional capital is necessary to further support our growth initiatives and ensure continued success. Therefore, we are actively seeking further funding, a step that aligns with strategies pursued by many companies in the industry. Meanwhile, we are continuing operations and supporting our valued customers while making efforts to right-size the company. We don't know if they'll survive, but hopefully other players in the EV charging space will take pause and have a closer look at the efficiency of their own operations to ensure they avoid the same situation. This past week, the White House announced more than $100 million in grants for small and medium-sized auto parts manufacturers to expand or retool manufacturing facilities in service of the industry switch to electric vehicles. The Department of Energy will set aside $50 million of its Automotive Conversion Grants Program for partnerships with states and up to $50 million of its Industrial Assessment Center Implementation Grants Program to help auto suppliers kickstart manufacturing diversification and conversion projects. Individual grants of up to $300,000 will go to businesses which have received an Industrial Assessment Center assessment to improve their facilities, energy and material efficiency, cybersecurity or productivity, or reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. Recently, the Department of Energy made an additional $24 million of grants available for EV and other clean energy and advanced manufacturing workforce training at community colleges, trade schools, union training programs, and registered apprenticeships through the Industrial Assessment Centers program. The federal government will launch the Auto Supplier Transition Network, which will provide research and hands-on locally-based technical assistance in auto communities to help small and medium-sized auto suppliers, unions, and auto communities navigate opportunities in the EV transition and broader clean energy manufacturing acceleration. Electric motorcycle manufacturer Rivid, which launched their Anthem commuter electric motorcycle last summer, has announced a new, smaller, and lower-priced scrambler-style model to their lineup called the Outset. It's advertised to deliver up to 70 miles of range on a single charge and a top speed of about 75 miles per hour. The motor delivers 10 horsepower continuous and up to 20 horsepower at peak and 53 pound-feet of torque. It's driven by a carbon belt. The electrical system is 72 volts and there is a single battery pack option sized at 4.3 kilowatt hours. Shared with the Anthem, the battery can detach from the frame and includes wheels and a handle so it can be taken inside for recharging or storage. The charging rate of 3.3 kilowatts makes a top up possible in as little as 1.3 hours. Rivet offers an adapter for J1772 level 2 support. Including the battery, the outset weighs up to 315 pounds and supports a payload of up to 330 pounds. The front suspension fork is adjustable and has up to 6.5 inches of travel, and the seat height is 33 inches. Other interesting features include reverse mode and cruise control. Along with the announcement of the outset, Rivet also announced a reduction in price for the Anthem from $8,995 down to $6,495. I've reviewed over 70 e-bikes on my Misco Electric Ride Reviews channel, but I've only covered a few electric motorcycles on this channel so far. This summer, I'm scheduled for classes to earn a motorcycle endorsement, and my producer has already been in contact with Rivet about getting an onset review lined up. Additionally, I've signed on as an advisor to the Moto Membership Community in Michigan. 
I plan to bring you more electric motorcycle coverage on this channel soon. How many of you have ridden an electric motorcycle? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Speaking of two-wheel electric vehicles, the City of Atlanta is finalizing a point-of-sale incentive program to offer their residents up to $2,000 off an electric bike. The program application process is expected to launch on June 16th and will be open until June 23rd. Residents must apply during a one-week application period and the application is a lottery process, so it does not guarantee that you will receive a rebate. The program reserves 75% of rebate funds for income eligible individuals earning at or below 80% of the Atlanta region's median household income, or about $54,000 a year. Income qualified residents are eligible to receive a $1,500 rebate for a standard e-bike and $2,000 for a cargo e-bike. Rebates for other residents are $500 for a standard e-bike and $1,000 for a cargo e-bike. Rebates are limited to one per resident and bikes must be purchased at a participating local bike shop. I'll link information on how you can sign up for updates on this program if you're interested. Every few weeks, I like to offer an update on the state of electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Joby Aviation has become the first of the eVTOL companies to have its final airworthiness criteria published by the FAA. Their craft carries four passengers and a pilot at speeds of about 200 miles per hour with emphasis on quiet flight. Manufacturing is to take place at the company's factory in Dayton, Ohio, relying heavily on vertically integrated components. Contracts with the Department of Defense and plans to offer regional service to JFK Airport in New York City have been among their standout announcements to date in partnership with United Airlines. Archer Aviation has designed a similarly sized eVTOL called the Midnight, which is to be built in Coventry, Georgia. This week, the Santa Clara, California-based company opened a battery pack manufacturing facility in Palo Alto, California. They reported an annual capacity of 15,000 packs. Each vehicle uses six packs, which were engineered in-house for this purpose. Production of the Midnight will be aided by their investors at Stellantis with an initial run rate of 650 vehicles per year. Delta Airlines has heavily invested too. Munich, Germany's Lilium announced a firm order for 20 of its Lilium Jet EV tolls from UrbanLink to establish airline services in and around Miami, Florida in 2026. They claim their craft will have a range of 180 miles under the power of 36 motors. Its cabin can accommodate six passengers and the cockpit has room for just one pilot. This week, Palo Alto-based Pivotal won a Muse Design Award for their Helix Ultralight, which is set to begin deliveries to customers in July. The single passenger craft sells for about $200,000 and can travel about 20 miles on a charge. It can be flown without a pilot's license, is amphibious in a pinch, and is intended for flights under 5,000 feet in areas with low population density. Personally, I can't wait to be reporting from EV tolls in the sky rather than down here on the ground. Well, that's it for this week's edition of The Current, but there are already some huge stories brewing for next week. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and sharing this video if you found some value in this coverage. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.